Greetings, back again here, and in this video I'm going to show how to make an uh, RGB SCART cable for uh, the Mega Drive. Now I modded a Mega Drive a while back, and uh, the problem with the PAL Mega Drives when you mod them to run in 60 Hz is that uh, you need the RGB cable to get color, or else the the picture will be black and white. So I'm gonna make one of those cables here and uh, what we will need here is a SCART cable now you could get just uh, a cable with uh, at least eight wires in it and uh, use one of these uh, SCART connectors but uh, I find it much easier to to use a SCART cable like this uh, because then you don't need to solder as many wires. So, got that one there. Uh, we'll also need an 8 pin uh, DIN connector, <coughs> and this is a U <coughs> sorry, a U shaped DIN connector, uh, not a C shaped. And it's important to get uh, the correct one uh, because otherwise it won't. To fit into the uh, DIN socket on the, the Mega Drive, so you need a U-shaped 8-pin DIN connector, and we will also need uh, three 220 microfarad capacitors, and three 75 ohm resistors and uh, one uh, 180 ohm resistor. Uh, I've seen uh, some uh, guides on the internet uh, using a 100 uh, ohm resistor and others using uh, the 180 ohm resistor. So I'm gonna go with the 180 and we'll see how that, uh, how that turns out. And uh, Apart from that, all we need are the usual uh, soldering iron and uh, or other tools. So, I'm gonna get started here. Alright, so uh, we will start by opening up one of the SCART connectors. And uh, this will be the one that uh, we will keep attached to the cable. So we'll unscrew this here and open this up. Uh, you may need uh, to use a small screwdriver to pry this open. So if you look here you can see that we have all the wires hooked up and uh, what we'll do now is we will uh, remove the wires that we don't need and uh, that way we get a bit more room to to fit our uh, resistors and capacitors and uh, there are uh, six wires that we don't need and uh, those are the wires uh, hooked up to pins 1, 3, 10, 12, 14 and 19 and if we look at uh, the connector like this uh, we have pin 1 up here on in the top left corner and uh, the top row we have pin 1, 3, 5 and so on and on the bottom row here we have pins 2, 4, 6 and so on so we'll uh, remove uh, the wires and to do that I'm using just a flat uh, plier here and let's see if I can set this up here so you can see alright so the red one here this is the wire for uh, pin uh, 1 so 
what I do is I just get a hold of it with the plier and just pull it out here like that. So you can see I've pulled the wire uh, from the pin and I'll do this with uh, the rest of uh, the wires that I mentioned and uh, then I'll uh, cut these wires off up here so as you can see here uh, I have uh, the wires removed and uh, before you throw these away uh, make a note of uh, the colors because we need to uh, remove these on the other end as well and what I usually do is I usually keep this until I'm finished with the with the cable uh, that way I can easily uh, just you know, take these uh, bits of wire and uh, you know, match the color when I'm doing the yeah, other end so uh, we'll put those aside for the moment and uh, next up here <coughs> we're going to remove another wire and uh, this is the one hooked up to pin uh, uh, pin uh, 16 and it's this one here so we'll do the same here uh, we'll pull it out uh, cut it off over here and uh, save the wire because uh, we will remove that as well from uh, from the other end and uh, when we have removed the wire we're going to take the 180 ohm resistor and we're going to bridge pin 16 with pin 8 so I'm going to remove the wire here and uh, start soldering uh, the resistor in place. Alright, so here I have uh, the resistor soldered into place. And to avoid anything shorting out here, I went ahead and removed the three pins between pin 8 and pin 16. And since we have no wires attached to them anymore, don't really need them so I removed those and uh, next up here I'm going to take all the ground wires and I'm going to hook them up to pin uh, 21 which is actually the shielding here and uh, that way we only have to uh, solder one ground wire in our DIN connector and uh, the ground wires here are uh, attached to pins 4, 5, 9, 13, 17 and 18. So I'm going to cut those wires and I'm going to cut them up here try and make them as long as possible so that they will reach over here and uh, then I will solder them onto there uh, so yeah, I'm gonna do that next here. Alright, so here we have all of the ground wires hooked up to pin 21. And all I've done here is I have uh, stripped the wires and then I've uh, twisted the exposed wires around pin 21 and then uh, soldered them onto there. So this way we only need to hook up uh, one wire to the ground pin on the DIN connector. So the next uh, thing we need to do here is to attach uh, the resistors and the capacitors to our red, green and blue. Now blue is hooked up to pin 7 on the SCART connector, uh, green is hooked up to pin 11 and red to pin 15. So what I will do here is I will cut those wires and then I will solder the 75 ohm resistor to the end of the wire coming from the cable and then to that I will solder the uh, capacitor and then the capacitor will go to 
uh, the pin. So I will do that here and uh, then we'll see if we can fit all this into the casing. Alright, so now we have uh, uh, the resistors and the capacitors soldered onto the wires and uh, now we are finished with uh, this end of the cable. So just uh, make a final note uh, on the colors of uh, the wires for the red, green and blue and also the wires from pins uh, 2, 6, 8 and 20. Now pins 2 and 6 are both sound. Uh, pin 8 is where we will hook up uh, our 5 volts and pin 20 is uh, composite sync. So make a note of that and then just uh, try and fit all of this in uh, the casing. Uh, I suggest that you wrap some electric tape around uh, the capacitors so that you don't get a short out. Uh, so I'm going to do that and then we can move on to the DIN connector. Alright, so now that we have this end of uh, the cable finished, it's time to hook up uh, the DIN connector. So I'm just going to open this up here. And uh, first we need to remove the SCART connector. So I'm going to cut all the wires here and uh, then we can remove all the wires that we don't need so I'm gonna do that and uh, then we'll have a look at uh, uh, what's left so I have removed uh, the SCART connector here and um, I like to keep uh, part of the wires uh, so that uh, I can use this for uh, other projects. Uh, but yeah, uh, once you have uh, removed all the unnecessary wires from the cable, uh, you should be left with uh, eight of them. And this is why it's important to remember the colors so that you know where each of these uh, goes on the SCART connector. So, uh, before we do anything else here, we need to remove this piece here and then put this on there instead. Uh, now since the cable is a bit thick you might have to cut part of this to make this fit. But uh, yeah, I'm gonna put that uh, on the cable and uh, then I will uh, strip these wires and uh, can start uh, soldering them to the DIN connector. Alright, so I have uh, all the wires soldered to the DIN connector and uh, the pins for this, uh, the middle one is uh, uh, blue and then uh, going from this one all the way around and up here uh, this one is not used uh, next one is composite sink then we got green uh, the bottom one here is ground next one is uh, plus 5 volts uh, the one after that is audio and it's mono only so I've taken both uh, the left and the right uh, audio and uh, hook them together to the same pin. I know some uh, some guides uh, suggest that you use a stereo cable and uh, solder the audio wires too and then you can plug that into the headphone jack on the front of the of the system but uh, I decided to just uh, hook it up to to the mono sound here. Uh, and then uh, the final pin is uh, red. So that's everything uh, soldered in place. So 
now I just need to put uh, um, the casing back on and uh, we can uh, try this out and see if it works alright so I have uh, my modded Mega Drive hooked up with the new uh, cable so let's uh, test this here and right now it's running in uh, 50 Hz so it's set to PAL and that looks good the uh, picture is really sharp and very nice colors so I'm gonna switch it over to 60 Hz now and we'll see if uh, we get the uh, color and we do so that means uh, the cable is working So switch back to 50 and 60 so yeah that's uh, the RGB SCART cable for the Mega Drive now when you plug this into the TV make sure that you plug it into uh, a SCART socket that actually supports uh, RGB because not uh, all of them does uh, there's usually at least one on on uh, every TV um, but if it doesn't support RGB uh, it will run in a composite video and uh, the colors won't work so yeah I think that's it uh, another thing um, when you're running it on RGB uh, you might notice that uh, uh, the picture gets shifted to the right and if it does then you may have to go into the settings on the TV and uh, change uh, the uh, RGB center uh, I noticed that on my uh, Sony widescreen TV and uh, I had to adjust that but uh, I couldn't adjust it all the way so there was still a bit missing on the on the right side of the screen but uh, on this TV here it works perfectly um, so yeah um, that was everything I had to show this time so bye for now and I'll see you soon